Well, hello, everyone. It's been a long time since I've been on Periscope. And I thought today might be a good day. I've got a slightly different setup, as you can tell. Uh, you know, I like to have backgrounds that I can change. Hopefully, you can hear this okay. I've got the camera fairly close, so it should be pretty good, actually. Let me see if I can pull a little closer here. Like I said, this is a new setup. So, uh, good morning. The light's a little yellow. I should have a slightly different light, but this will do the job. As you can see, fine, just fine. Great, great. As you can see, I have a, a background uh, here now, uh, and, I, and I'll try to do that as often as I can to try to go along with the theme of what I'm talking about. I'm doing that on my YouTube channel. Those of you who've been on my YouTube channel and follow me there at Roy Potter QA, uh, you know that... Uh, you know, I, I, I've changed, at least at least for the nightcap uh, program that I do, I try to change the backgrounds, but I'm, I'm trying to do it for all, all of my broadcasts when, when I'm in a studio and I can do that. And so I'm not in a studio right now, but they got a TV, and uh, I thought, well, I'll plug the HDMI in and just put up a, a background, and so that's what I have here. I hope you find it enjoyable. Again, uh, you know, the light is right in front of me, so I'm trying to block it from the picture if I move. Let me show you why, why I'm kind of moving around here. See that? Yeah, the light that I have to use because the TV screen is so bright that if I don't have a light in front of me, <laughs> I get totally washed out and you know, all you see is a shadow. So anyway, again, it's been a long time since I've been on Periscope. I, like I said, I, I think today's the day. First and foremost, I want to wish everyone... Happy holidays, the happy time of season, uh, time of the year right now, this season. Uh, happy Thanksgiving in a couple of days, then Merry Christmas, then Happy New Year, 2019-2020, uh, and, of course, all the other holidays that are celebrated during this time, too, like Hanukkah and, and all of that. So uh, I wanted to just say that to you and, and invite you over to my YouTube channel, and you can see a special holiday treat that I put in there. It's a movie that I made based on uh, my my daughter's story that she wrote for her fourth grade class. And we made a little movie out of it. It's, it's nothing real professional. It has some good effects in it, but most of it's just pretty straightforward on a green screen. So uh, go take a look. Oh, I'm glad you saw it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, she's real proud that, you know, we made a movie about it, even though she's little, you know, or was little at the time. Uh, it, it gave her a really good feeling that you could actually see it on TV, <laughs> the story that she wrote. Uh, I was going to put her in the in the movie as a character, but uh, she was just not ready for that. So she wrote the story, and, and the story's good enough, and we got some other people to do it. Anyway, so uh, I was going to play the movie actually here for you, but uh, I, I'm having some difficulty setting up the sound, so I didn't want to take too long today to do that. So at any rate, I just wanted to wish you all a, a, a happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year, and happy any holiday that you celebrate. So that's why I've come on. I guess there are a few things that we could discuss since I haven't been here in so long. Gee, we have a whole four people here. <laughs> well, I didn't expect too many, actually. <clears throat> Not having been on Periscope all this time, you can't expect people to be waiting in the wings. But I thought it'd be kind of fun. So uh, we see a lot of things happening. Uh, well, now we'll get off the holiday stuff, and then we'll get into some of the, the current events. Uh, I, I, again, if you follow my YouTube channel, this is probably going to be redundancy here. But uh, a lot of people like to get their information this way, so I thought I'd go ahead and do it. Uh, Black Conservative Patriot, if you're not subscribed to him on YouTube, you really need to be. Uh, this guy's been around for a couple of years. Uh, he's already got, like, I think uh, 300,000 followers. It's because he's so good. He sticks to the issues. He'll give you his opinions, too, the way he feels about things, but he, he pretty much sticks to the issues. He doesn't do like I do and run off and, and you know, start calling for, uh, you know, people being fired and, and uh, indicted. He'll do that, but certainly not in the way I do it. So I just wanted to plug him. BCP is on YouTube. And again, headlines with a voice, uh, that's very good. Uh, and, and, you know, I've named a lot of others over the time, but uh, I wanted to bring those up so that you'd know. And on Twitter, uh, GG Sims is good. 
and, and there are a lot of others that are good there. The Conservative Treehouse, there are a lot of good people that you can follow there. And, and these are, by and large, not BCP, uh, he's, he's, a, he's an economics guy, but a lot of the other people that I'm suggesting to you, uh, they probably have intelligence backgrounds, and that's why they're on there. So I just thought, or, or legal backgrounds, uh, one or both. So anyway, that's where all of that is. Uh, I am real concerned. Uh, you know, the, the the whole thing with the impeachment is, it's really a joke. It is. Uh, but as I've said on my YouTube channel, uh, they, they don't care that they're not making any sense. That's not the idea. The idea is that they keep this out on the forefront and it gives cover to anything else they want to do, to, to take Trump out or, more importantly, to take us out. And I think everybody understands that, that that's the entire reason for this. Uh, yeah, they're making, they're making uh, idiots of themselves, but, you know, I, I don't know what the percentage is, but a very good portion of the, of the country and even of the world buys that stuff that they're putting out there. I have relatives that believe that nonsense. So uh, we have a problem, and Trump, as, as I've said all along, the inaction is just, is, is just mind-boggling, and it's troubling. Uh, Barr, uh, the whole Epstein debacle saying that, as you probably heard me say on my YouTube channel, Barr is saying that it was a, 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 a perfect storm of screw-ups. I'd have fired him for that. Uh, that's no excuse. Uh, that's, what, that's what a junior high school kid says when he hasn't done his, his homework or whatever. That's, that's the kind of excuse he uses. And so Barr is not impressing me at all at this point, not in one little bit. Very, very troubling. Uh, the fact that no one on the other side has been arrested for clear and obvious crimes and seditions, possibly treason, this is unexcusable, inexcusable. <laughs> and, uh, of course, you know, we're waiting to see what happens with the IG report and uh, the Durham uh, situation and all that. But as I've said for a long time now, until I see people in handcuffs and hauled off, I don't believe that they're going to do anything. Okay, I'm not saying it won't happen. I'm just saying I don't have. I'm not anticipating. I'm not. I'm not waiting anxiously for it to happen. When it happens, it happens. But they're going to have to prove to me that they're serious. And so far, they haven't been. There's no reason with everything that Judicial Watch has done and everybody else. And I could name a bunch of people. Uh, obviously, you could too. Uh, there's there's plenty of evidence out there, and they should have moved on these people. Now, Soros is a real big problem. There's no reason the Delta Force hasn't taken his ass out. <laughs> yeah, I'll say it that way. And people say, like this Fiona Hill, oh, well, George Soros, you, you don't like him. If you don't like what he's doing, you're an anti-Semite. Wrong. You know? If I don't like some white guy because he's, you know, well, Soros is white. <laughs> you get the idea. If if I don't like some white guy because he's doing something wrong, it's not because I hate him because he's white. It's not being anti-white, right? Well, this this whole anti-Semite thing has been going way too too far, way too far. And the other the other thing about that is, Jews. If you if they want to say they're Semites, that's fine. But Jews aren't the only Semites in the world. They, if they, and if they think otherwise, they need to go back and look at their Torah and find out what it says about who the Semites are. <laughs> Unfortunately for them, their Arab brothers are Semites. So, you know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I am drinking coffee this morning. Good morning again, everybody. Good morning. Hi, Finest Planet. Nice to see you. Okay. Uh... The other reason why I wanted to come on, we could talk about politics all day, you know, and, and the military situation, the, the uptick in Syria and all the things that are going on, but I don't really want to do that. Uh, where I'd like to go with you today is somewhere I've never really gone on Periscope before. Uh, I've touched on it on my YouTube channel. But, uh, you know, uh, about, oh, I don't know, maybe about two or three weeks ago, uh, I ran into a guy on YouTube, and some of you are going to know who it is, by the name of Richard Grannon. He is the Spartan Life Coach. That's the, his other name that he goes by. He's uh, British, 
I think he teaches here in the U.S. though as well. He, he travels the world. He's been in Prague, Czechoslovakia, uh, a, a lot of places. And I really, really like him. I, I, I find him to be an outstanding, outstanding counselor. And he's down to earth. You know, he's not, he's not um, if, if any of you watch him, and you really ought to, he's down to earth. He's not presumptuous. He's not, you know, I'm better than you looking down his nose at you through his spectacles, you know, that kind of thing. He's really, really good. And, uh, you know, he's helped me with some things. And I wanted to give his, his uh, channel there uh, a little plug. Richard Grannon, G-R-A-N-N-O-N, the Spartan Life Coach. Uh, if you're having uh, difficulties, and, and, and let, me, let me say the reason why I'm bringing this up. There has been a concerted effort, as he points out, to make people uh, close their doors. I look like George Bush. <laughs> Wow, you better put some glasses on. I, most people say I look like Mel Gibson. A much better fit, I think. At any rate, so get me off subject here. So uh, there's been a concerted effort to break down the the man woman relationship and the the basically the the interactions between us as people to shut our doors, to be suspicious of everyone, uh, to to be conformalized, I think, is the, is the term that Grannon uses. I might be mistaken about that. But the idea that uh, confrontationalized, that's it. You look like Roy Potter. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank you. Confrontationalized is maybe a better way that we're, we're, we're being forced to look at everything as a confrontation rather than opening our hearts and minds to our fellow human beings. And so we're being shut off. And he points out that this is a Stalinist tactic. It was talked about, of course, in 19, the book 1984, also Brave New World, uh, all of those, about how you would do that. You know, the, the, the making of, uh, of, of normal human relations, crimes, and, and something that needs to be controlled, particularly and most importantly, the personal relationships between men and women and, of course, the sexual um, relationship as well. So Richard Granning gets into all of this, and it's really, really very good. Uh, so I'd suggest that you go and listen to some of the things he says. I think it's therapeutic for us as a society because everything, uh, like the Me Too movement. I mean, I know that there are men out there who abuse women, but it goes the other way as well. And, again, it's just a way to make women uh, come up against men and to, and to dis, not just disrespect them but actually hate them, and there's a lot to that. And really what they're doing is, is they're projecting their own uh, faults, their own uh, misdeeds onto the men most of the time. It doesn't always happen, but it also happens the other way, that women can be, uh, can be abused. Usually abuse from women is more on the emotion, from women to men is no normally on the emotional, uh, mental side uh, or, you know, withholding something, you know. Uh, on, uh, the guys are... are are, but but there have there are instances which I can attest to that women can get physically violent as well. I've seen that both in, in the military and as a police officer and even in my personal life, frankly. Um, however, um, men normally do resort to. Uh, at first, it'll be, you know, trying trying to use uh, uh, emotional um, or mental tools to control a situation, but they can, of course, can go. To, to physical abuse quite uh, quite fast. Uh, and that's the, just the difference between the two. Striking a woman has never been something that I put up with ever. Um, pushing and shoving sometimes is necessary to protect yourself, but striking a woman is just not good. Uh, there are occasions where, as a matter of fact, I can tell you, well, even though I didn't know as a lady, I was on the police department, and uh, uh, I won't tell you the whole story, but basically it was a, it was a setup I think I talked about it before, and uh, uh, about I don't know six or eight people burst through the door, and I was in the fight of my life. My my uh, the guy who was there, my partner, it scared him so bad he ran back to his car. So I was fighting these six people off, six eight people off by myself. Well, I had this one guy down on the ground, and somebody jumped on my back and tried to remove my gun, and I brought my arm up and I smacked him really hard with my elbow. Turned out it was a lady. I knocked all of her front teeth out, and I felt really bad. But under the circumstances, you know, what do you do? So it, it can happen, but it's unfortunate when it does. So 
again, the Richard Grannon things are, are very, very good. And uh, women are jealous to work around, always bitter if you outwork them. Oh, yeah. I, as a matter of fact, my wife Carol used to say, I'd much rather work around men than women. Women are too catty and, you know, they go around behind you and all that. And, and, and I, I know a lot of women. Actually, Michelle Anderson has said the same thing. The girl, that lady that's come on the show with me a couple of times, she's she's mentioned that. Um, guys can be bad, too, but it's it's a different thing altogether. It's it's uh, it's real competition, and you know it's competition, right? Yeah. Anyway, getting back to Richard Grannon, which is the real reason why I want to come up, because this Christmas season, the, the, the reason why I'm doing this is because, like Grannon, I, I would hope that we could repair these these divisions, these separations between, uh, especially between men and women, but but across the board because of the of the war that's been waged against us to, that that we are, you know fight against our fellow men and women uh i'm not saying to take your guard down there are times when it's absolutely justified to do that but unfortunately like so many other things that Solinsky does uh they do and they force on us what they do themselves okay and so that's why I wanted to bring it up. Uh, there's no, there's no healing the left, right, the leftist, and I mean the leftist Marxist satanic side. There's no healing that with our side. That that bifurcation, that separation is justified, and there's no healing it. Even Grannon's wrong there. Okay, there is no going back on that. He talks about we always divide things into two because we, we're, you know, we're hominids. You know, we have two eyes, two. Ears, two hands, all that. It's really interesting how he brings this out. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that, that it's just true that there that that side that that is calling for the 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 usurpation and destruction of our of our liberties, of the perfect law of liberty, and of our constitutional republic. I'm not saying the Constitution is, is perfect, of course. If we could have a better a better founding document show it to me that's all i'd say and and it can be it can be altered accordingly but our our bill of rights and those rights that are guaranteed us as human beings and as americans should never ever can never ever be used for negotiation to uh, get political favors and 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 that's where i draw the line they want to change the administration of things that's one thing but when you start attacking the the liberties of the people and then you got a problem, and that's not justified, and no majoritarian coercion can permit that under a republic. But that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to be the Greeks, say, you know, majority rules. If the majority wants to take your guns away, we can. No, no, that's not the way that works, and we can't allow it to go there. So anyway, there are a few things that I disagree with, with Grannon on, but uh, he considers himself a leftist, and I, as I said in my video the other day, um, he and I would be very good friends. Uh, my wife, Carol, was a Democrat, very much the type of Granin is, not not leftist Marxist, not not crazy, you know, not out to, to take away your freedoms or to steal from you or anything like that, but just believing that, you know, governments can fix things. And, of course, she and I would disagree on that, but we never got into a shouting match over it, uh, which was really quite amazing, actually. So Granin goes on and he talks about these things with... Uh, uh, bipolar disorders, uh, chronic uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. He talks about, um, especially, he'll talk about it on both sides, but I think it's, despite what the common mainstream media and, and, and uh, social networks talk about, and I don't mean just YouTube, I, when I say social networks, I mean the whole movement towards the left in the social sociology and psychology fields, um, they they like to say that men are most responsible for narcissism, and and uh, those types of things. Uh, that has not been my experience. There's a difference between confidence and nar narcissism, uh, and I think Richard Grannon makes a very good case to show that that's so. He'll still include men in this thing, but uh, I think he's he's pointing out that this is normally coming from the female side. And it's been designed that way. Our our TV media, um, yeah, finest planet. You're probably right. Or no, actually, actually, she'd probably be like me. She would probably not have anything to do with the Democrats, but look with a jaundiced eye at the Republicans. I still don't trust them, and I think everybody knows how I feel about that. But uh, <clears throat> so, at any rate, um, what I would like to present 
in light of what Richard Grannon has said and and him and his efforts to try to repair these divisions that have happened in our personal relationships, especially between men and women, and how we should approach those. What I would like to say is this, and this is where I'll end up today, and this is really my message, I think. Uh, why do we see faults in other people? Why do we see sins in other people? And I've said this before, and I just want to say it again today. You know, when Richard Grannon pointed all these things out, and, and I've been aware of them before, but he had a talent for presenting it that I had never heard before. You know, I've listened to Jordan Peterson, and I've listened to other people. I mean, when I had a run-in with a relationship I had a few years back, it's been about, well, it ended about seven, eight years ago now, eight years ago, something like that. Uh, two years after my wife died, I finally dated a lady. I think I told you the, the story. Anyway, it didn't turn out very well, unfortunately. I was very upset that it didn't. But, uh, you know, I, I, I looked at this person, and, um, and I was thinking, wow, I wish you weren't like that. And I was projecting onto her my intentions, which were, in my estimation, and I still believe this, we're, we're basically good, okay? I wanted a good long-term relationship. I wanted to have the type of relationship, open relationship. When I mean open, I mean, you know, where you communicate. There's no coercion. Um, uh, you, uh, you're you not worrying about what the other person is thinking about you 24 hours. You might think, I hope they're thinking about me. But what I mean is is you, you don't feel a necessity to find out what it is they're up to that, 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 that they're using to try to damage you or your relationship. That's what I'm talking about. Um, and so, you know, I saw those things, uh, and Richard Grannon talked about them, and he says, if, if you have those feelings, then you're in a toxic relationship. And you can manufacture this stuff up to, and I realize that, but, but I'm talking about if, in fact, you see faults and sins and errors in other people, we don't need to judge them harshly, but we do need to protect our own, our own hearts. You need to guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard yourself, as Grannon says. And sometimes you don't want to. You might love a person so much you're willing to take the abuse. But the problem with that is you're not being fair to yourself or them in reality. So why do we see faults and sins in others? And this is where, I, like I said, I want to end up. And I started to apply this before I listened to Grannon, but I even do it more now. When I see something in somebody else I don't like, I consider it a mirror to examine myself, to see if those traits that I find, if not abhorrent, at least unnecessary, bad in that regard, I turn that, what I see in them on myself, and I say, am I exhibiting, do I do those same things? And if I do, I need to repent, I need to change. And that's what and I said the other day. You might not be able to change the world, and Grannon says this too. You can't even expect to do that because you're not going to do it. The world you have to change is with inside yourself. And that's what this season, that's what this time, and I know there are questions, oh, it's a pagan holiday, and I, okay, I know all that, okay, I know all that. But still the spirit of the season, as far as brotherhood and, and treating people good and trying to do the right thing is, is wonderful. So we can still worship, we can still do the things that are in Torah, for instance, you know, the feasts and the festivals and the holidays and, and Torah, which most people would consider to be the right things, you know, like Passover and and uh, um, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, those types of things. I understand that, but there's nothing wrong with having a season for us, too. They tied Jesus to it because of Constantine, you know, okay, that's fine, um, but the point of the season is is brotherhood and 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 opening your heart and uh, giving to others and and for that I think it's a good thing I think it's a very good thing. So let's look when we see faults in others, politicians. That's a whole another set of games. Okay, when you're talking about politicians and leaders of of those types, you look at them and if you think they're bad, you call them out for being bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and normal people, you will too, but. You don't, you know, the real purpose of seeing these faults in others is to be a mirror so that you can search yourself and to see if you have those traits and those characteristics in you that you see in them that are, that are a problem, that damage others. So I've tried to apply that 
uh, all the time. I, I'm not I'm not a hundred percent accurate with it, but I do my very best. And I would hope that at this time of the year, you will look and search yourself as you see these faults and sins and shortcomings in others. That immediately you turn and you search yourself and you see if those things are evident in you, and then make the change that you want to see in the world. And that's my Christmas message on Periscope this 26th day of November 2019. Again, Happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, etc., etc. And uh, I don't know that I'll be on Periscope any more often now, but I, I wanted to come on and do this. Uh, this new setup is kind of neat. I like this. I might use it uh, more often. The lighting is the big problem at this point, but you might see this type of thing uh, a little more often. All right. Okay, everybody, thank you for coming. We had all of five or six people here, and that's okay. I didn't expect a huge, a huge number of people this morning. Uh, but go ahead and share this message on Periscope and anywhere else, like if you're on Twitter or whatever, wherever else you can share it. Please do that because I think it is a good one for the season. All right? Okay. Out here, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.